Hello guys, I wish to take you through flowcharts in KCSE. Remember this is found in question 16, which is compulsory in computer paper one. And uh, I have chosen three questions from KCSE previous years where we can interpret flowcharts, can take you through the process of interpreting flowchart. To start with, let's look at 2013 KCSE question 16, correct that one, this question 16, and therefore the question reads that uh, we have this flow chart. We have, uh, if you look at this one, we have start, then read x, then we have sum equals to zero, n equals to zero, then after initializing sum to zero and n to zero, we are told that n equals to the value of n, for instance, here which is zero plus 1 and for that instance for the first loop n will be equals to n to 1 because 0 plus 1 is 1 then when we come here this is sum equals to sum plus n according to instruction sum is 0 and so far we have seen our n is 1 because it is 0 plus 1 and therefore our sum is n which is 1 plus 0 and therefore also our sum is 1. Then when we come to this point, we ask ourselves, is n equals to x? If yes, then we print the sum. If no, then uh, we go to we go to starting it here again. That is, we enter the new values of sum and the new value of n, and then we proceed until n will be equal to X. But for that juncture, we must be given the value of n by the examiner. And therefore, let's go to the questions. We are told, determine the output from the flowchart if x equals to 5. And remember, we are our point of reference is if n equals to x, or rather is n equals to x. And we have been given that x for this juncture is 5. On the other hand, we have been given that x equals to 7. Therefore, we shall be, I'll be taking you through this important part here, how we interpret and fix these values to get the output. And therefore, for that case, you have four marks. Also, we shall uh, just go through uh, how to write the pseudocode of that figure three, five marks, and also how to modify it to accept or to get the sum of 50 to 100 but our point of reference or a point of interest is this part determine the output that's why i have made it bold and therefore let's go to how i have gone through it we have been told n equals to n plus one and therefore what you're supposed to do you're supposed to write x from zero to seven uh, that is through five because we have we want to capture to give the output when the value is 5 and the, when the value is 7. And therefore, this is the point of calculation. Therefore, what you do, you come to this point, our first, and when n is 0, uh, sum is also, sum should be, okay, when sum is, this is 0, the sum should be 1, because uh, for this case, you just come to this point and then key in n. When you key in uh, n, as that is n as 0 then n equals to 1 and that case sum is 0 and therefore it becomes 1 plus 0 which is you get 1 then you come to this point you now get this one value of sum plus the value of n and for that case the value of n is 2 and therefore it becomes 2 plus 1 you get 3 for that case you go to the next uh, iteration whereby your value of sum will be 3 and if your sum of that is if the sum of if sum is 3 and your n is 2 therefore it becomes 2 plus 1 plus now this 3 you get 6 then you proceed that way where you take the value of n you take the value of um, n plus 1 plus the value of sum 
also on this point you get the value uh, that is the value of n which is uh, n 4 plus 1 you get 5 you add this you get 15 then for that juncture here you take the value of n which is 5 you bring 5 here that is 5 plus 1 that is 6 and therefore this becomes 6 plus 15 you get 21 then for this point here you come to this point you take the value that is 6 you bring 6 here it becomes 6 plus 1 7 plus now the value of sum if it becomes 7 plus 21 you get 28 and for that case when x is 5 and we have said x must be equated or equal to n and therefore 5 equals to 5 then you get 15 when it is 7 that is value of x and value of n 7 7 you get 28 therefore basically uh, ladies and gentlemen what we are doing you bring the new value of sum here and the new value of n here for every iteration then you now compute then when, when you reach to the decision you you check whether the condition is true or false if the condition is false again you key in the new value of sum here and the new value of n here and do the calculation for that case you'll be in a position to get the output and therefore for that case our answer is 15 and uh, 28 that is the value of 5 and the value of uh, that is 7 then the pseudo code for that one you just come and input x then you are supposed to initialize the sum sum to 0 then you initialize n n equals to 0 it is not a must you write these statements they are there just to make the throw therefore you're supposed to write input x sum equals to 0 n equals to 0 then you go to where the increment is or the decision we have not actually the decision but the increment we have n equals to n plus 1 then add the new value of n to sum that is sum equals to sum plus n we basically focus on this part therefore the new value of sum plus the new value of n that is that has been incremented by 1 then you go to the decision part if n equals to x then you go to step number 7 or you go to step number 4 that is, you just go back to uh, these ones. Then from there, uh, modifying the flow chart to have the sum of 50. This is how you are, uh, your system will look like. We shall have sum equals to 0, n equals to 50, then the increment, then the addition of the new value of sum to n that has been incremented. Then the condition is n equal to 99 then the roping goes back therefore that's how the modification will look like then let's go to kcc 2012 of question 16. below is an algorithm that is used to compute the values of r s and t therefore basically this question is very similar to that question of the year 2013 only that this one is in written form or in pseudocode whereas the other one is a flowchart and therefore these are the two kind of questions that are being alternated where you get the answer becoming the question and the question becoming the answer therefore this is very simple ladies and gentlemen basically we have been given that from the algorithm determine the output if the input value of n is 7 and 10 and um, for this case you just go through the pseudocode we have been uh, we have assigned 5 to p and 6 to q then we input n then if n if n this that is this various here given by the examiner if n is greater or equal to 10 therefore if condition is true we execute r equals to p times q s is q minus p t is p plus q plus r plus s you see and therefore for that juncture uh, this is the yes part else that is the negative or the false part or no if the condition is not true then we shall execute r equals to r plus q 
S equals to Q and T equals to R plus S. Then the system adds and prints the value of R, S and T. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, what you are supposed to do here is come to this point. We are interpreting this flowchart to get the output. You get this 7. You get 7 as the input. Therefore, is 7 greater or equal to 10? The answer is no. And therefore, if it is no, we shall execute this part. And therefore, we shall just come to this and say R equals to R equals to P. That is 5 plus 6, we get 11. And therefore, S equals to 6. S is 6. Then T equals to R, uh, which is now 11 up there, plus S, 6, 17. You get 17 here as the answer. And when we go to the other part here, when we go to the other part here, 10, we get 10 as the input. Therefore, if I get 10 and insert 10 here, therefore I ask myself, now in, instead of n, write 10. It is 10 greater or equal to 10? The answer is yes. And therefore, if condition is true, then we execute this part here. That means r equals to 30. That is p times q. Then on the other hand, s equals to 1. That is 6 minus 5. T equals now to the, uh, the that is that is the 5 you get here, plus Q you get here, plus now the value of R and the value of S, having uh, used these values. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am sure with that, you can be in a position to see that um, this one is very cheap and also very uh, simple to understand. Therefore, basically, the hidden point here is to know that the value of n, which is 7 for part 1, is the one to be captured here. Then, on the other hand, the value of n, which is 10 for part 2 of the question, is the one to be inserted here. Therefore, basically what happens is that uh, if the condition is true, you execute the first part. If condition is false, then you execute else. There, that is the second part. And basically, you've been in a position now to uh, get the answers. And therefore, I have just done this, the expected answer, given that 5 equals to, uh, sorry, P equals to 5, Q equals to 6. Therefore, is 7 greater than 10? No. Therefore, the condition is no. And therefore, you execute this. R equals to 5 plus 6, you get 11. S equals to Q, and therefore Q is 6. Therefore, the value of S is that one. Then T equals to R plus S, that is 11 plus 6, you get 17. On the other hand, 10 equals to 10, it is true. Therefore, that condition is yes. And if the condition is yes, then for that juncture, we just say R equals to P times Q. And therefore, that is that. On the other hand, S, you get that one. And then you can just add them up to get the other answers where T equals to P plus Q plus R process. Therefore, the drawing point here is if you can be in a position to interpret the flow chart. Then we have the last question. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, I told you that I have chosen three main questions that are actually uh, nice or for me, I saw they are good to go. Therefore, let's go to KCC 2016 question 16. And for this case, this is also another flow chart that is similar to 2012 and 2013. And uh, for that case, we have start, the flow chart that starts, then we initialize n, we initialize the base to 2, n to 1, power to 10, and then ans to 1. Then we just come to this point and say ans equals to ans times base. For that case, if I just terminate this one here, um, I will just come to this point and then take ANS, which is 1, times 2. And therefore, here we shall get ANS is 2. Then we go down here. Is N equals to power? You usually put a question mark. Therefore, if condition is true, then you print the. This is for CRT or for the screen. Therefore, you print the answer. On the other hand, if no, then increment. If 
the value of n here was 3, then it becomes 3 plus 1, you get 4. And therefore, when you go to the next iteration, it will be n plus uh, 5, and the story continues. Therefore, let's try to see what the examiner expected us to do. And therefore, we have our nine marks, interpret the flowchart. Therefore, basically, if you are asked to interpret the flowchart, it's like you are told to write the pseudocode, but this time around, in uh, context form, or in a story form, where, whereby I will just come to this point and say that uh, the program starts, then the value of n is 1, or n is initialized to 1, base is initialized to 2, power 10, then ans to 1. Then from there, we are processing that ans equals to ans times base. Then we are checking if the value of n is equal to power. If the condition is true, then we print the answer and the program terminates. On the other hand, if the value of n is not equal to value of power, that is if condition is no or if condition is false, then we go, we increment the value of n by 1 and the process continues again. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, when you are asked to interpret a flowchart, you are supposed to uh, write like a contest that is an explanation of exactly what the flowchart is doing. You can also opt to write a pseudocode and a pseudocode, remember these are English like statements that explain how an algorithm in form of either a flowchart is doing. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of my presentation. Remember to subscribe. Remember to share these videos so that they can be of help uh, to many students and also to many runners across the country. Thank you very much. See you in our next session.